It stopped and we hit the bottom of it. And we just about get fed up. So if, if we can uh, chase down some more money from the Provo River water users, what's what's amazing to them is we talked about water right here, but as soon as it hits right here, it doesn't belong to us anymore. <laughs> it's gone. So it impacts them quite a bit too. But that'd be nice to be able to do a gravity study and some of these electromagnetic surveys on it to kind of help determine how big it is. That way we can tell how big the bathtub is. So it's important to consider that the water water usage will impact everybody else about it. It, it will impact everybody. So, thank you for your time and thank you for funding this. And are there any other questions? Any questions? Thanks, Peter. Good okay. I heard a report a week ago of the Snake River Valley, that whole area. There's a million acre feet of water in that lower aquifer in that valley. It has a lot. Seven million flow through every year. Yeah. Yeah, yeah the, people, the people in Vegas are, they're not dummies. <laughs> they know that. Okay, the next committee is the Land Use Committee, and, and these are the recommendations that they made. Um, let me just go through these briefly. The, the general note added on the top is the Waldberg and Southfield planning area. And just so you're all aware and the audience is aware, there's there's two planning areas with this Waldberg area. You have the uh, Waldberg planning area that's essentially the valley floor and the irrigated area. The South Hills planning area is the bench area that goes all the way down to the county line at the Sundance turnoff. Um, so, there's language in both of these elements of the general plan, Waldberg and South Hills planning in their area that affect the Waldberg area. Um, so the Waldberg and South Hills planning area should be managed with the primary goal of managing growth from the town of Waldberg out. All zone changes and general plan changes should be implemented with this goal in mind. And then under receiving zones, any receiving zones may be established in accordance with the established zoning practices of encouraging growth from the existing centers of service, Wallsburg Town. Density sending areas must provide for permanent open space. Receiving zones in the area will be determined through the public process and should be determined by Wallsburg Town to be used within town boundaries. P160 zones should not be considered as a receiving zone. So. Um, just for general information, with the transfer of development rights, um, you have receiving and sending zones. The sending zone is somewhere that you want to preserve, so the, the development rights are purchased off that property. The irrigation is the water is kept on that property, and then the receiving zone is the area that that is intended to be developed. So in this case, they're saying um, receiving zone should be the town. Sending zone would be the agricultural areas. Under P160 clustering, it says clustering should be allowed in the P160 zone. There may be a maximum of 25% density increase for development within the P160 zone that clusters the development adjacent to the higher density zones toward the center of town. To achieve the 25% maximum bonus, the development must demonstrate that the following criteria is met. Maximum lot size is 40 acres. Open space is permanently dedicated. Motorized and non-motorized access is preserved for public through open space and public lands beyond. Any development in P160 preservation zone should be done with preservation in mind and minimize impact on watershed, wildlife, and minimize roadways. So those are the recommendations of the Land Use Committee. What we have here is a letter from the Wallsburg town. One of the things we talked about is if the only receiving zone is the town, um, then if the town's not willing to accept any of those uh, transfer of development rights, then it, it makes TDRs impossible. So the town provided this letter that says, as representatives of the residents of Wallsburg Town, we state that we are in favor of Wallsburg Town remaining the center of growth in the Wallsburg Valley as detailed in our general plan. To that end, we recognize the importance of planning for that growth, including planning and allowing for future commercial zones within the Wallsburg town <coughs> boundaries as they now exist or as they may exist in the future. We also state our willingness to participate as a receiving zone for TDRs as a means of allowing the preservation of sensitive areas from development while also allowing property owners a means of realizing some benefit from their property. We firmly believe that the transfer of development rights in the Wallsburg Valley 
should only be allowed between areas where the zoning is the same or very similar. Also, we reserve the right to determine if the TDR fits our vision of the future of Walker. Signed by the town board. Um, keep in mind, though, that also TDRs, to be able to be a receiving zone, it's only a willing seller that would, have, that would accept being that part of the receiving zone. So these are the red lines that we made to the code. Actually, I think it, these were done by um, Clint uh, on your uh, land use advisory committee that you sent back to us. Um, so the black type is the existing um, general plan language, and the red underline is proposed new language. And it says uh, in that first one, any receiving zone should be established in accordance with established zoning practices of encouraging growth from existing centers of services. Density sending areas must provide for permanent public benefit. And then the next one down, elements of this agricultural protection program should include the encouragement of farm preservation subdivisions, as well as a discouraging five acre lot zone. And then the last sentence in the last paragraph, the access roads should provide for arterial crossover roads and then trail accompanying this access road should be established. So I think what that's trying to say is that there should be a connection between um, uh, Main Canyon Road and Brown Valley, is that right? So we'll talk about that in a minute with the transportation uh, comments. Um, so th this is the transportation committee comments and they did a great job working with UDOT and oh, Mount Doug. Land. Yes, I could TDR. We're moving on to, to the transportation. I've got a question for you there. Since you've got a lot of experience with you know, studying the TDRs and how it's worked in other areas in the state or around the country, let's say if a person owns property in the sending zone and the receiving zone, it's probably pretty simple to make TDRs work. But what, if, in your opinion, what do you think the chances are of making TDRs work if there's two parties involved, one in the sending and one in the Zone. Has it been very successful in the past in the state or around the country? Uh, I think it'd be very difficult um, because, as I mentioned, you'd have to find a willing seller in the receiving zone. The other thing you have to do is um, find new water. You've got to keep the water on the irrigated ground. And then for the development, the receiving zone area that's going to be a higher density, you've got to bring water to that as well. Um, there's only a few areas in the state of Utah that's had success with um, TDRs. One is Mapleton. I've met with them years ago. And it was a scenario where you had one landowner um, that held all the sending zone area. Um, so it took that aspect out of the equation. But, um, and it was a very limited amount of property. I think it was around 100 acres or so. So, it, um, and it's worked in other areas of the, of the country. Um, I know San Luis Obispo has a, a, a working ordinance that has been used quite a bit. And they have a problem around as well, too. Okay. Thank you. Before we go on, Doug, if you go back to the P160 cluster, <coughs> when it said minimum lot size of 40 acres, maximum. Did that say minimum lot size? I think that I think sense. that's what they they intended was a a maximum lot size because what you would do is you'd take the density wouldn't change if you had a thousand acres you'd divide a thousand by 160 and get however many lots that is and then you could cluster them on a maximum size lot of 40 acres the rest would be dedicated open space. Does that make any sense? You get a 25% density bonus, which brings you down to one unit per 130-ish acres. Um, so, and uh, Spencer Park can speak to that. Uh, that they're brought in these recommendations. So. Okay, moving on to transportation. Um, I think everyone's familiar that the. The general plan currently recommends that there be eventually a second access out of the valley. Um, so that's something that the transportation committee still recommends. 
And as I mentioned, this was something that they worked with Mountain Land Association of Governments. I have some traffic analysis data that I'll show you. So we also had meetings with UDOT um, on some other issues as well. So a, quarter, a second corridor out of the valley, um, plan responsible growth of the roads from the valley to US 189, plan to keep growth behind the new roads, not ahead of them, design road before housing developments, plan to keep building below streams and waterways and or implement rules of stream and watershed protection. So I think the intent there is to have setbacks away from the floodplain and the, and the watershed areas. Place bonds on development and or impact fees to cover costs of future road maintenance. And six, involve UDOT with any future impacts of US 189. So um, one of the things we did is while the construction is happening on 189 around the Wallsburg turnoff there, um, AECOM is the engineer that's been doing the work there. So in meeting with UDOT, we were trying to figure out where we would have that second access come out. So AECOM said, you know, rather than submit an invoice and do all the work that, and make this take six months, let's just do it under our current obligation to UDOT. And so they came up with this location that's about 2,000 feet south, southwest of the existing uh, Main Canyon Road. So that was done with engineering in mind. It's um, view sheds and grades and all that type of thing. So that should work for a second access. Now it has nothing to do with grades on the hillside, but just where it comes into 189. These were uh, traffic modeling that was done by Mountain Land Association of Governments. So you can see the existing Main Canyon Road and those numbers there are, multiply that by a thousand. So this is a build out, the build out scenario. And what you can see here is the congested flow area at build out is this area right um, west, northwest of town. Um, you've got congestion on 189, but that doesn't change with the second road out, of course. So with the second road, um, it takes those average daily trips down, so it's all free flow. The other thing that the Transportation Committee talked about is they felt there should be connections, as I mentioned, between Main Canyon and Round Valley. Um, uh, Roundy Lane, am I saying the right road? I don't remember. Roundy. Roundy. Mm -hmm. So they wanted to see connections instead of um, what we're typically seeing is five acre subdivisions or farm preservation subdivisions that come in with a cul de sac and they stop here on the north side of the creek. Um, and never intending to, to take the road through. So the idea would be to have those connections between those two roads, instead of having to drive all the way down and go around to get to Mountain Lane. Right. Um, the Environmental Subcommittee had some recommendations as well. And uh, again, those are in red. So what they recommended, and the Environmental Committee was the intent was to study the effects of um, septic drain fields on water quality and, and that type of thing. So what they're saying is with improved technology and waste water management, increased density may be considered if there is no degradation of the pristine water standard. Um, and then the next red area, the establishment of this infrastructure would allow the density in this area to be one unit per one acre or greater within the town of Wallsburg. Um, to me, those recommendations, the second one in, within the town of Wallsburg, um, I don't think would be a problem, but to say that <clears throat> valley-wide in the general plan um, would be an argument to have higher density than or the same density as what the town would allow, which uh, may be not appropriate. So. I see my improved technology here. Is that a common source? Uh, no, I think what they're saying is the, the new septic drain I just want to make sure that so it's still small. Um, this went to the Planning Commission, and as I mentioned, that the, when the council met December 23rd of last year, the recommendation was 
let's get an advisory committee together, let's have them make recommendations on this. So when the Planning Commission met, um, they heard from the advisory committee and their recommendation was just to forward those, those uh, discussion items to the council. So that's where we're at. They didn't get into solving any issues or problems or um, any of that. So, so that's, that's where we're at is the recommendations of the uh, advisory committee. <coughs> Can we go back to the transportation recommendations? I think five may be the problem for us. And since I retired, I get to lot, lot, watch a lot of Judge Judy. Uh, <laughs> impact fees can't be used for maintenance, so we need to change that to future road construction. That will yeah, and there's some things we'd have to work through with any of this language. Um, okay. This is just this is just the raw okay. language I came back to you. I hadn't been I had I had monkey with it, so no we can't use any back feet to maintain the existing. I've got one other question. I'm just curious from uh, do you do that do they give any indication or maybe somebody on the transportation say might know? Yeah, when in the future there might be a light at the, at the first entrance to Walter, it's there now. You mean on 189? Yeah. They didn't. Uh, I don't know. Is, is Lee here? Lee no, Lee didn't. Okay. They didn't give any indication of when the light or overpass or any improvements beyond what they're just doing right now. We, we question them. But they're pretty tight lip. <laughs> any other questions for Doug? If not, if there's any, we have your report from these committees. We appreciate your work and thought, your recommendations that you put into these these uh, ideas, suggestions. Are there any of you, any of the members of the committee that would like to make any comment? <clears throat> For some reason, I like to talk, I guess. Um, I would like to, I guess, address the uh, P160 clustering zone, why we kept it at 40 acres. We kind of tried to do an evaluation of any of those lots that get sold up there are probably for estate type homes. And if you're going to build one home, a state lot, 40 acres, is probably going to keep you far enough from your neighbor. So the cost, you probably will make the same amount of money off of it if it was on 160 acres, plus you get the 25% density to bring it back up if, if it needed to be, to make sure that landowners up there made the same money on their property <coughs> just versus selling four 160 acre lots. You get an extra, you know, on a section as opposed to that. Um, so then we could all keep it down low. Should it be read, read maximum or minimum, I think, what you have? I think it's maximum. We didn't want them to get bigger than 160 or bigger than we're not really, not really focusing it and clustering it down to the bottom anyway. We're spreading up bigger lots. Yeah, I think it needs to be maximum. Um, what do you stop a person coming in and making uh, three 10 acre lots and then one uh, 130? Well, then they wouldn't get the 25% density because they wouldn't all be under 40 acres. So we would, that's what would stop them. Okay. We'd love it if they make four 10 acre lots or five, you know, because then we would, it all be clustered down and we'd keep more of our reservation zone preserved. Um, so we did that. And I don't think, if you go back to that, they're not giving up that much. I mean, the access through there we should already have with pres prescriptive easements. Um, we're getting some open space that's permanently dedicated. That they can still use for farm agricultural use, sheep grazing, whatever they want. I mean, what the uh, property has historically been used for. So we can still keep our agricultural use up there and, you know, cluster our homes down at the bottom. Um, it's common space, but, but or open space for private land. Yeah, we didn't put any verbiage in there that, you know, public needs to access it or anything. We just need to have the right to go through it. Um, we just don't think for 25% we've earned that right, but um, that's probably a good question to ponder. Um, 
As far as one thing I, I, I saw on the environmental committee that, you know, I don't know that we, I wonder if we could take that language out of there about the, uh, um, sorry, the special service district. But we're hoping that we don't need a special service district and the town will be given the opportunity to be our water and sewer system combined for the whole valley as it's done throughout our build out and stuff. I and mean, that's the whole uh, reason probably for most of our land use comments is we can keep the growth centered around town and grow out from there and then the water and the sewer system can be expanded as that went. Um, but, okay. Um, I was reading through that on environment. That's on page five. So when it's talking about the special service district, I'm a little confused on the language. Is it talking about the town of Wallsburg creating a special service district? Yeah, that wouldn't make any sense. Because towns mean? can create a special service district, but they have to do so within their boundaries, I believe. Yeah. They don't need it. They, don't, they shouldn't need one. They don't need one. Yeah. They, yeah. yeah. They they can. Can. Well, that's part of the plan now. Yeah, so you're saying they got to... Maybe we ought to cross that out because the that town... That would be unincorporated town. The town wants to be... <laughs> Provide utilities, so what's a lot of would the town I, I don't know if this is too deep, but would would the town need to annex that area to provide the services to Eventually as it was expanding out and out and out and out. Um, so is the pieces I guess my question is, is there a desire for the county to create a special service district by the developers or where's the developers? Where you guys at? Are you guys looking at doing a special want the county to create a special we've, service? We've proposed that. Yes. Okay. I think that might be a help stand, county help stand too. And we're going to have uh, common sewer system, somebody that can train and manage it. And they, the state requires a property or a special service. Yeah, yeah, once we create the service, then we have to create the SSD or the city. Yeah, they can't get Oh, yeah, sorry. That, I was asked to. Yeah, they can't get the city. They can't get the city. They can't get the the question that I had was about special service districts and is there a desire for the county to create a special service district? And Spencer, you're saying that you don't... I don't think we need to. Okay. Um, one of the developers, I'm sorry. Okay. Paul Berg, representing the developer. Yeah, we have proposed this special service district. There are recommendations in the general plan related to a special service district in the Wallsburg area. Okay. We, we did joke about it in our meetings that we wish we could just move the sewer plant from below Jordan the Dam over to us and it's <laughs> sitting there so illustriously now. Thirty five million dollars. <laughs> you know, we kinda well, maybe that's not a we kinda wish you could do that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I don't think you do. So not to um, Okay, so we did also a lot of talk about DVRs. We don't know if we need them. I and mean, they've never been used in the county before, they're not used in a lot of places. But if the town wants to implement them, I I think that's where they ought to be focused. One of the comments in the planning commission meeting was that we're going to double in the next 20 years, and I, th I think that's okay. Um, this existing zoning, and if you take the town's boundary out to their first annexation area and figure it at one acre, one house per one acre, we're already at 2,700 homes. We got 300 in the valley right now. That's nine times. We're zoned right now for nine times existing. So we're way past our 20 years. I don't, we don't need extra density to achieve our objective of doubling in 20 years, or if that's even an objective. Um, and I guess in closing, I just would like to say a lot of our comments is we would like the opportunity to grow like the rest of the county. We want to grow like Carlston, Daniels, Center Creek, Lake Creek. Unfortunately, we don't want to grow like Jordan L. And that's what this plan that we're talking about was trying to do. Um, thank, I thank you guys for your time and all the uh, time and effort you've given to us and all the time you've had to listen to us, I guess, too. Thank you. Thank you.